Let's, uh, let's look at you here. I have my art prompts for today. I need to do catch. I'm going to use the tree brush on this one. I'm going to try and figure it out a little bit more. Hi, this is Future Amber. Uh, here are some things I was thinking about when I was drawing this. I was mostly playing with the stamp brushes for this one, which is why I did a lazy perspective in my sketch. These brushes were downloaded straight from the Clip Studio Paint intro screen. The program is a great community surrounding it, so artists will often share brushes and textures they've made with others. Sometimes you buy them, but all of these are free downloads. Since recording this, I have since bought a slew of True Grit Supply uh, com brushes and texture packs that have even more options which you'll see in future videos but for now everything available um, you can find through the Clip Studio Paint program. Mm, and swing. I started doing these drawing prompts over a year ago. My original plan was to do one every day, but life gets in the way when you have a one-year-old, so I get to them when I can from my prompt list. The prompts are available on my Patreon, patreon.com slash artglitch, if you like my drawing and want to support me. Please also leave a like and a comment on the video. It really helps me out. My method is pretty simple with these. I'll start with a word and then find an image using Google search that I like for reference. That's what you see on the left. Put this up on the screen and draw, draw, draw. Because these are just warm-ups, I'm not worrying too much about getting them pixel perfect. It's more about getting my hand and wrist moving right before I start drawing other things. The two prompts we're working on here are frail and swing. At this sketchy stage, I'm just working out the general composition and layout of each drawing. Because I've spent years inking my own pencils, those pencils have gotten looser and looser until only I can seem to be the one to interpret them. Uh, these are about as tight as my pencils get these days. get into the fun part of the drawing using stamp brushes all of these brushes are available for download for free so if you like something you see go get it the wood grain brushes used here on this tree um, in the trunks are also shared within the clip studio paint community um, I want to create the illusion of depth without drawing each individual tree so I went with layers of trees there's the furthest and smallest layer, which I end up drawing a little bit later than this. Uh, but this close tree up front needed some extra attention to make sure it didn't pull too much focus away from the figure, which is why I ended up drawing it first. A great trick for drawing trees is to think of the Fibonacci sequence. You know, one, three, five, seven, nine, blah, 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 blah. I wanted to go for kind of a wintry fall type of year to go with the older figure and the prompt of frail. So people kind of think of their winter years when they look at it. Stamp brushes, stamp brushes. Oh yeah, I was definitely having a fun time with the stamp brushes here. Because I'm working black and white here, I wanted to make sure I didn't complicate everything with a million gray tones. So I'm really only using about two or three tones besides black and white. 
this leaf brush that you see me using here is also available from the Clip Studio Paint community, uh, free, available from the intro screen. This is just a simple grass brush. I think it actually comes with the program that I'm just using to fill in the background. Breaking up the grass here with some uh, light eraser work. When I started building the path, I wanted to make sure I had an amorphous edge to it. And you can see I'm adding texture brushes for the ground. But the crack that I'm adding was one of the creator uh, made brushes within the community. So I'm adding cracks to the ground. Uh, I'm gonna add some hand-drawn lines to help kind of accentuate the flatness of the trail. I'm adding some light shading to the background here to kind of push it back before I add the figure. Let's open up some of that background so that it looks like you can see through the trees. There, that looks a little bit better. There we go. That's a lot of fun with some stamp brushes right there. I just had. I drew the figure on a separate layer in the sketch, and so that's what I would hold up for me to be able to draw the figure on its own layer, which is what I'm doing right now. Um, the figure is just an old woman leaning on a cane, but I wanted to kind of emphasize that lean. And so it's a little bit more exaggerated of a form than what you see in the photo. There's a really great book by an author, Bern Hogarth, uh, art book called Dynamic Wrinkles and Drapery, which is a book I think about all the time when I'm drawing clothing or any kind of cloth. And so it talks about how there are valleys and hills in cloth and you need to remember where they're at. You need to remember how they interact with each other and how light plays off of them. Uh, drawing comics, oftentimes you don't have to worry about light. That's the colorist issue. But uh, in this particular case, I was worrying about the shading because I did the shading myself. So I wanted to make sure I got the shadows right. Got to get in those orthopedic shoes. <laughs> so 
So I turned off my sketch layer so we could look at just the inks. And what I'm creating here is a tone in Clip Studio Paint that creates like a zip tone. Um, I'm making a mask over that so that when I erase the mask, it makes the zip tone over the figure. Here we're making a new layer so I can basically uh, separate the figure from the background by adding a white layer. Adding the shadow is really tying the figure to the ground and the rest of the picture. More zip tone. I'm working back into the mask here to uh, raise some of the zip tone. This was my prompt for December 8th, 2021. Not bad. I actually really like the way that that one turned out. All right. Switching my reference over. Gone with the swing set. This drawing was swing. I could have gone with the swing set or swingers or anything like that, but instead I went with like swing music, and um, I think it turned out pretty well in the end. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have like this 1940s boring haircut. Working traditionally for so many years, I got a, a real sense for how ink behaves on a page. So when I draw digitally, I tend to kind of stick to those principles of how ink behaves. So when I'm putting down lines and you see me just kind of connect them to each other and stuff, uh, it's really easy digitally to go in and erase that stuff, but in ink, it's not impossible. So I always try and make sure I get the line right the first time because that's how I trained myself when I was working on paper. Everyone says hands are really hard to draw. I remember spending hours and hours and hours as a teenager and in my early 20s just drawing hands in my sketchbook. And so I got to a point where I, can, I think I can fake them pretty well. a really good example of how I interpret my loose pencils. So you can see I'm pulling these lines out that aren't there. Uh, there's lines that are definitely there, but they're not the ones being inked.
this was the prompt for December 9th of last year. All right. Oh, there's my baby girl. There she is. See? See, that's you. That's you. Hi. But that's you. <laughs> I have more Twitch and Patreon subscribers than what you see here now, but um, this is what I had at the time. Thanks. <laughs>